A number if you want to be part of the program, 888 Now, all of us experience dryness in our spiritual life. Sometimes it's God withdrawing so that we can grow in the desert. But other times, we can actually do it to ourselves. This is a super interesting uh, topic. In fact, uh, Pope Francis, the Holy Father, uh, spoke about spiritual desolation in his uh, Wednesday audience at the Vatican this morning. Joining us live uh, now is Kendra Von Esch, a regular contributor to Morning Air, to talk about self-induced dryness in our spiritual lives and uh, why this happens and what we can do about it. Kendra is a speaker, a faith coach, a podcaster who is passionate about sharing her faith, her supernatural transformation, and spiritual experiences while helping others along their journey. Kendra is also the author of Am I Catholic? A Struggle with Faith, Humility, and Surrendering to God. Good morning, Kendra. Thanks so much uh, for being with us here this morning. It's uh, uh, great uh, to have you on the show, as always. It's great to be here, John. Happy Wednesday. Hump day. We're almost there. It's the weekend. Happy Wednesday to you. You know, I thought about you this morning as uh, I was chatting with our Rome correspondent, Ashley Narona, because the Holy Father in his uh, papal audience actually spoke about spiritual desolation, uh, which is exactly related to what we're going to be talking about here in in our segment. Yeah, so I wanted to start and kind of give a mishmash of what is desolation. So I'm going to kind of look at some Carmelite stuff and talk about the nine levels of prayer so that we know the difference between desolation and dark night of the senses or dark night of the soul, which is a little different. And then, of course, we've got to tap into St. Ignatius and his 14 rules of discernment of spirit. So Bear with me as I kind of educate everyone, because guess what? Even Protestants agree how awesome our Catholic faith is and how we truly know how to pray. The spiritual practices that we have in our church, this Catholic church, is like, should be, I should say, like breathing in the physical world. Prayer to a Christian should be considered like, hey, if we don't pray, (laughs) our spiritual life will completely perish. So prayer is the lifeblood of the spiritual life. So how come it's so hard? (laughs) Why is meditation and contemplation and mystical prayer, it's taken such a back seat in some of the people's lives that I know. And so how does that happen? So I want to just kind of talk about the difference between desolation and the dark night of the senses. So, and this is something that we've Saint all Ignatius dealt with. Loyola Everybody is, says, has at some point felt that that dryness in our interior life. So, um, I, I'm so glad that you can uh, bring this issue and make it come to life. Yeah, sorry about that. I had you uh, turned down too low, so I didn't hear you. I was talking right over you, John. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so. Why does God allow desolation? First of all, desolation is a darkness of the soul. There's a disturbance in you. And guess what? You start moving yourself to low and earthly things. You disquiet yourself from various agitations and temptations, and you move to a lack of confidence. You kind of seek confidence to speak. You're kind of hopeless, maybe without love, and you're finding oneself totally slothful, tepid, sad, and as if you are separated from one's creator and Lord. Like, that's huge. In the spiritual life, to not feel the presence of God can rock someone's world. But it's so important that we don't let that take us away uh, from praying and fighting through that, because that's basically what St. Ignatius tells us. So we must fight back. We need to continue to pray. We need to not allow the feelings and the distractions and the lack of joy that we feel. We actually need to double down. We need to add more prayer. We need to have maybe an extra five minutes. It's basically a game with Satan because there are spirits out there that are minimalization of sin. How many times have we minimized our sin, talked ourselves out of it not being so bad. There's spiritual sloth, another evil spirit that can 
attack us in the time of prayer and also confusion and distractions and obsessions. I mean, how many spirits can I list? I'd be here all day, John. <laughs> But yeah, there's the there's important- many many things that contribute to uh, to uh, uh, the, this this feeling of spiritual uh, dryness. Um, could a tragedy, personal tragedy, and uh, really difficult times uh, be be part of uh, the reason that you feel uh, worn down uh, with that lack of hope uh, you, when your faith is being tested? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely. That's when we ourselves are filled with emotions especially in something like a death in the family or a divorce, or maybe it's financial issues or a job issue or something that has basically rocked your world. And a lot of the time we go toward worldly things to help us cope with the feelings and the emotions that are overwhelming us, that feeling of hopelessness. I mean, the theological virtues are, you know, faith, hope, and charity, faith, hope, and love, as some people say. That is consolation. When you're in prayer, God gives you that. And we want more and we seek it and we feel it. And you know that God exists because it's in your soul. When you're in desolation, it can be an outside situation. But at the same time, it could be something that you're doing. For example, maybe you're deciding not to go to daily mass anymore. Or you're not praying every day. Or you're not doing any kind of spiritual reading. We can do this to ourselves by walking away from God, walking away from our spiritual commitments in negligent ways, and that's how we turn it around. Make sure that we can identify this and know that, wait, I have to choose to love God. This is a tough one, John, because, you know, I have my struggles, you have your struggles, we're not people that are perfect in prayer, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, these people who are up at the nine level of prayer, like in perfect union with God, which I struggle with the first two levels, which is vocal prayer and mental prayer. Most of us don't even get out of those two levels. And by the way, I I never did go over those nine levels, but uh, the dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul are two bridges between the three kind of ways of prayer and the advancement in the spiritual world. So now that I teased everybody, let me just really quickly review those. So we have the purgative way. That's where most of us are. We are in vocal prayer, mental prayer, effective prayer, acquired recollection. That's where most of us are. And then when we go into the illuminative way, we bridge with the dark night of the senses. And that is something totally different than desolation because we're actually climbing and going up that ladder in our in our faith so to speak okay and then there is oops in the illuminative way is next infused contemplation and prayer of quiet then there's another bridge and it's the dark night of the soul and then we go into the unitive way, simple union, conforming union, transforming union. So all I want to say is look at all those levels and how many of us are not at those levels. We are so low and we still struggle. So let's talk about ways. And I'm sure there are plenty of callers that can call in. How do you get yourself back in the game? Kendra, I, I just before we go to break, if you could just really briefly um, crystallize exactly the difference between um, spiritual dryness and desolation. I'm still a little fuzzy on the difference between the two. Okay, so let's do this. God allows the enemy to oppress us with troubles of the heart, and this is desolation, God allowing it. So the first reason is because we've become negligent in our own spiritual exercises. I just mentioned prayer, mass, sacrament of reconciliation. And through our own faults, spiritual consolation is withdrawn from us. And the second is that God tries to tries us, tries us, tests us to see how much we extend ourselves to serve and praise him without a sense of grace or consolation. So are you going to 
continue to say, I love God, I love God, when you're in the midst of your problem or your issue, that death, that divorce, that finances? Or are you going to curse God? Or are you going to walk away from God? That's pretty much the test. We should continue to know that God is still there and that consolation will be on the other side of this desolation. And the third one before we run to a break is to help us feel and understand that spiritual consolations are graces from God and not due to our own striving. Otherwise, we're going to become prideful and we're going to attribute all of those gifts to us. Look at me. I got up and I prayed and I felt this beautiful consolation of peace. It's all because of me. And it's really gifts from God. Everything so I know that is that- a gift from God. Obviously, uh, his, his grace is, is such a gift that, uh, that we all uh, can experience and tap into. We need to take a, a short break. Uh, Kendra, I want to invite our listeners, uh, if you have dealt with spiritual dryness or desolation, if this has ever happened to you, uh, if you want to uh, share with us uh, ways that you've been able to get back on track, we're taking your calls uh, for Catholic author and faith coach uh, Kendra Von Esch at Triple Eight. 914-9149. That's 888-914-9149. We're going to take a short break as we continue our discussion with Kendra. Stay with us. There's more to come. You're home for faith, fun, and news in the morning. It's Morning Air with John Morales, Sarah Tafoya, and Glenn Leverett. Jump into the conversation. Call 888-914-9149. Yes, indeed. If you want to jump into the conversation, our number is 888-914-9149. 888-914-9149. We're talking about desolation and self-induced dryness in our spiritual lives. What can we do about it? How do you deal with it? With our good friend, uh, regular contributor, Kendra Von Esch, a Catholic speaker, author, and faith coach. Um, Kendra, I can't help but think of uh, so many great saints that have had to deal with this. Uh, I know you you mentioned uh, St. Ignatius uh, earlier uh, of Loyola. When I, when I think of, of uh, spiritual dryness, I think more recently of St. Mother Teresa, so, who uh, oh. we found out she went through this for decades. And I... Uh, <laughs> You know, we talked about dryness and desolation. I want to clarify a little bit for the for the audience as well as yourself, because I didn't really cover that. So dryness is something that we kind of experience as an individual. So, for example, if I've got something weighing on my heart and I'm having dinner with my husband and I don't talk about it and he knows something's going on and he doesn't bring it up, there's this dryness in the conversation. And you can connect that to God, too, because we're wanting to talk to God. We're seeking God. But it's more of an individual thing. It could also be like that physical event in our life, like we mentioned, the death, the divorce, etc. But when it comes to God and the spiritual enemy, we kind of look at desolation as being like it's of a spiritual nature. We have discouragement. We have a sense of distance from God, a weakening of hope. And of course, we're tempted and the like, you know, we really get tested in our faith. But yes, it is extremely important for us to <laughs> to keep going. And how do you get out of it? What do we do when we find this dryness? And there's four things that St. Ignatius and the saints have all told us. This is, we should be listening to the saints, learning from the saints because they've been there, done that. And they've advanced so high into the third level of the nine levels of prayer. And I don't know about you, but I want that mystical experience. I want to be levitating and I want to get there. (laughs) So how do I do it? Pray. Oddly enough, prayer is so key. And we experience dryness. We experience attacks. So please understand that you can pray away these spirits of confusion, these spirits of distraction, these spirits of, of, obsession. Maybe you can't think of anything but your to-do list while you're praying. Well, cast it out. I always say, when in doubt, cast it out. Even if it's not an evil spirit, play the game. So you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of confusion, of distraction, of temptation. You may even be sitting there praying, 
on your phone looking at the scripture and being tempted to go flip over to social media or check your email or whatever else is is tempting you at the time. So pray. And by the way, according to the sixth rule of St. Ignatius in the discernment of spirits, 14 rules, pray more. Show Satan that he can't do this to you. And then just Meditate. one thing, if I may interject, uh, Kendra, yeah. uh, St. Ignatius obviously has a lot to say on this. Um, I was also reading St. Francis de Sales, who uh, agrees with St. Ignatius about the importance of, of praying, just speaking to the good Lord from the heart that you're going through this tough time. But he recommends something very interesting. He says, kiss his image while you're praying. Ooh. Kiss the image of our Lord. Kiss the crucifix uh, to really, con- to really uh, overcome uh, that tough time and, and, and make a statement to the evil one that, uh, you know, you're not going to be uh, uh, upset. Exactly. And maybe also on that same line, because the evil one hates Mary so much, maybe grab that rosary or, you know, have a little statue of her close by. There's definitely sacramentals that can help us through the prayer. And by the way, don't forget to bless yourself. I don't know about you, but I got holy water. I have exercise salt and oil in my house. <laughs> That's so funny. My house could be covered. I love it. I lo- <laughs> covered you know in that any I have holy day. water. You, you're not going to believe this, but I have a bottle of holy water next to my vitamins. So every morning as I leave oh. for work, I bless myself with holy water while I'm taking my daily vitamins. So I never forget. And that is a vitamin for you. <laughs> That's protection more than vitamin C, D, and zinc. I'm telling you. Okay. You, you so it. what else can we the, do? The, Okay, the next thing we could do is meditate. And that really means quieting your mind and putting it, focusing it on God. This is not that new age meditation or where you empty your mind and you go out into the universe. We need to focus on his word, on the truths of the faith. How often do we remind ourselves of the awesomeness of the Catholic faith and the beauty of the sacraments that can help us on the journey? And if you want to do it on steroids, I would say do it in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Amen. Seriously, when Jesus says, could you not pray with me one hour? He really is talking to all of us. Come visit me. He's so lonely. Just go see him for an hour. Even if it's a couple of minutes, it's better than nothing. Just show, make those acts of love. We don't earn our love. That's not what I'm saying. But we should want to see him and to be with him and to praise him and to love him. That's when our heart starts being filled with consolation as we keep seeking him and walking to him. And then examination. I'm telling you, examining ourselves and our conscience and our day is not fun sometimes. (laughs) It should be a beautiful moment where we thank God for raising to our eyes where he was and where he wasn't and how we ignored him and how we saw him. But it's also to help us learn. If we don't look back on our day and say, oh, was that me, was that God, or was that the evil one and his minions, then we're just, excuse me, we're just running around blindly. We're not learning anything. Reflection is so important because guess what? You're going to see that near occasion of sin that you did that led you to that mortal sin. You're going to see how evil did tempt you and how you didn't stand up and fight with deliverance prayers. You were in the gunfight with a knife, as I like to call it. God gave us so many beautiful weapons to fight this spiritual battle, yet so many of us forget to use them. And then last but not least, my favorite, penance and the sacrament of reconciliation. Go to reconciliation. That's one of the rules. Satan wants to keep all of your sins in secret. He doesn't want you saying anything. He wants you to hold it in, to pretend like you're not struggling with something, to keep it from everybody that you know. Well, that's why we have this beautiful Catholic Church and reconciliation. So get in there. Say that you're struggling with your faith. Express to Jesus in persona Christi and the priest who's supposed to be in basically Jesus. Speak to Jesus while you're in there. Lord, I'm feeling disconnected from you and I'm allowing myself to go back to the lowly ways of the world and then just start listing them off. I'm telling you, Satan's so upset when we do that because he he wants us to feel like self-hatred and secret. 
It's like that an affair that you're having with someone. The minute it gets out there, you know, you want it all in secret, and Satan makes you keep it in secret. But the minute it's the light is shined on it, you're busted. <laughs> you know. Kendra, final minute, uh, a word on perseverance, the importance of persevering in prayer, in our faith, uh, no matter how you're feeling. I like to look at it like, look, I don't want to look at God and say that I allowed the world to tempt me away from him. Everything I have, all of my material goods, my faith, the family that he's put in my life, I'm here for such a time as this. We need prayer. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if we don't pray and go to God and tr keep trusting and asking for more faith, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, we're going to be sucked into this evil world and it's going to rock our peace, our love, our conscience. And I don't want that for any of us. So keep praying. God is always there. And a minute later, you'll be in consolation. I am with you, my sister. Kendra, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Uh, great suggestions. I really appreciate your perspective. God bless you. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care, John. Thank you, Kendra. Kendra Von Esch, a faith coach, podcaster, author, and a regular contributor to Morning Air. And now it's time for another episode of Glenn Story Corner.